You are looking at a live shot from Pad 39 at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Baikonur, Kazakhstan. Weather conditions are currently favorable for launch and final preparations are in motion by the Viasat-1 mission team to launch the Viasat-1 satellite aboard an ILS Proton. Today's ILS Proton launch is a collaborative effort between ILS, International Launch Services, its customer, Viasat, and satellite manufacturer, Space Systems Laurel. The Viasat-1 launch will take place at 12.48 a.m. in Baikonur, which is 2.48 p.m. here at the ILS Broadcast Center in Washington, D.C. It is now 2.30 p.m. October 19th here in Washington and 12.30 a.m. October 20th in Baikonur. Stay tuned. The Viasat-1 countdown to launch begins now. Thank you so much for joining us for today's launch of the Viasat-1 satellite. I'm your host, Jennifer Gladstone. I'm joined here at the ILS Broadcast Center by Jim Bonner, ILS Vice President and Chief Technical Officer. Jim, it is really great to have you here with me today. Thanks, Jennifer. It's great to be here. Now, we mentioned the weather a minute ago. Talk to us about the conditions in Baikonur now. Well, Jennifer, the Proton is specifically designed to launch in most weather conditions, including extreme hot and cold. There are very few weather conditions that could cause a delay in proton flight. The weather readings at the Baikonur Cosmodrome indicate that we're within range limits for liftoff. As we last checked, we had mostly clear skies, a liftoff temperature range between 39 and 44 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 4 to 7 degrees Celsius. The ground winds were from the northeast at 5 to 8 meters per second and all the wind constraints are nominal and we're good to go. So go for launch as we speak. All right, go for launch, Jim, thanks so much. Now here are some important facts about today's ILS Proton launch. This will be the 369th Proton launch overall since Proton's first flight in 1965 and the 68th ILS Proton launch. This is the fourth ILS Proton launch of 2011. Telstar 14R was launched successfully in May, SES-3 with the CASAT-2 satellite in July, and KETSAT-1 was launched successfully on September 30th. The satellite operator for today's launch is Viasat, located in Carlsbad, California. This will be the first Viasat satellite launched on an ILS Proton. The satellite manufacturer is Space Systems Laurel, based in Palo Alto, California. This will be the 19th Space Systems Laurel satellite launched on an ILS Proton. Now let's take a moment to hear from the President of International Launch Services, Frank McKenna, who was interviewed earlier with Mark Dankberg, Chairman and CEO of Viasat. The fourth commercial mission for the year for ILS, and it will be the sixth overall Proton launch this year, following three commercial missions and two federal missions. ILS and Krinichev have been able to accommodate such a rapid launch pace through the implementation of the second processing facility. This adds the capability to reduce the time frames between campaigns from five to six weeks to three weeks, unsurpassed capability in the industry. Viasat-1 will be the largest satellite that ILS Proton has launched to date. It's a, really the first of its kind of a new class of satellites that's totally oriented towards high throughput, high bandwidth. This will use the full phase three capability to launch 6,700 kilograms for the Viasat-1 satellite. First one most important is our Wild Blue business, delivering high-speed broadband to consumers throughout the United States at speeds that are much higher than what they can get now or in any other way. We also have really exciting applications in aviation with JetBlue, first of all, for in-flight broadband. And we're working on really exciting applications in satellite news gathering, defense, and a bunch of other areas. This is accommodated by the development program that we've had on the Proton, 
and the execution of a fully successful phase one, two, and three program. We started working with ILS and Kurnichev uh, once we got into the program, and we were really struck by how uh, enthusiastic they were about wanting to work with us and how aggressive they were to get our business. Kunich has been really responsive in working with us and finding the earliest possible launch window. This is the most powerful K band satellite to be implemented over North America, and we're just proud to be a part of that program. And so Viasat 1's been on my mind, and Mark Miller's mind has been working with me to see is it even possible to do a 100 gigabit satellite? How would you do it? Will it make it economical? Figure out how we could get through the regulatory hurdles how we could finance it. It's been really, really exciting, and it's been sort of my passion for, uh, I can say, at least a decade. Thank you for joining us today for the ILS Proton launch of the Viasat-1 satellite for Viasat based in Carlsbad, California, with 2,200 employees worldwide. Viasat produces innovative satellite and other digital communication products that enable fast, secure, and efficient communications to any location. The ILS Proton launch of Viasat-1 will be the first Viasat satellite launched on an ILS Proton. Viasat-1, an all-KA band satellite, was built on the Space Systems Laurel 1300 platform and is the highest throughput satellite ever built with over 130 gigabits per second, more than all of the satellites over North America combined. Viasat-1 will be located at the orbital position of 115 degrees west and will cover the continental United States and most of Alaska, Hawaii, and Canada. So if you're watching the launch in the United States or elsewhere around the world, or if you're with the Viasat-1 mission team watching live from the Baikonur Cosmodrome, I'd like to close with one final message for today's launch. Go Proton, go Breeze M, go Viasat-1. The ILS Proton mission for the Viasat-1 satellite will take nine hours and 12 minutes from liftoff to injection into geostationary orbit. Now let's take a look at the Viasat-1 mission profile. The following is the description of the mission flight profile of the ILS Proton launch vehicle with the Viasat-1 communication satellite on board. As the ILS Proton lifts off from its launch pad, it immediately executes a roll maneuver to align its flight launch azimuth to 61.3 degrees in order to achieve a parking orbit inclination of 51.5 degrees as it travels eastward. The first three stages function to propel the orbital unit to a suborbital trajectory. The orbital unit consists of the Breeze M, payload adapter system, and the Viasat-1 satellite. The sequence starts with the ignition of the powerful first stage engines that output 10.5 meganewtons, or 2.4 million pounds of thrust at sea level, which is equivalent to the thrust power of nine Airbus 380 commercial jets at takeoff. The engines fire for about two minutes, during which time the ILS Proton experiences maximum dynamic pressure and then the first stage separates from the rest of the vehicle. The second stage engines follow with nearly 2.4 meganewtons of thrust for 3.5 minutes, and then the third stage engine fires with 583 kilonewtons of thrust for four minutes. The payload fairing is separated soon after third stage ignition, high above the Earth's dense atmosphere. The drop zones for each of the stages and the payload fairing have been predetermined for minimal impact to specified areas. At stage three separation, the orbital unit has traveled from Baikonur to Russia near the eastern edge of Kazakhstan at 51.5 degrees north latitude, which corresponds to the parking orbit inclination and is moving about 7,200 meters per second or 4.5 miles per second relative velocity. The upper stage of the ILS Proton rocket is called the Breeze M and is designed to inject payloads into a wide variety of target orbits. Five Breeze M burns have been designed to inject Viasat-1 into a geostationary transfer orbit. The first Breeze M burn occurs about a minute and a half after the third stage separation when the orbital unit is still in a suborbital trajectory. 
The burn is in the direction of the velocity vector and will last long enough to achieve a low Earth circular parking orbit of 177 kilometers. This 7.6 minute burn spans from Siberia to Russia's east coast. The second Breeze M burn centers the ascending node of the first orbit, whereby the orbital unit crosses the equatorial plane as it travels from south to north. The resulting elliptical orbit is called the intermediate orbit. This 17.7 minute burn spans from South Atlantic 800 miles east of Rio de Janeiro to Libya. A little over two hours after the second burn, the third Breeze M burn starts. Soon after this burn shuts down, the depleted auxiliary propellant tank is jettisoned and the fourth Breeze M burn begins. Just like the second burn, these two combined burns center the ascending node of the second orbit. The resulting orbit is called the transfer orbit, where the apogee is greatly increased to closely match the geosynchronous altitude. These two burns add up to 17.2 minutes and span from South Pacific 200 miles west of Santiago, Chile, to 400 miles west of Morocco. During the coast phases, the Breeze M performs attitude maneuvers in order for Viasat 1 solar arrays to be exposed to the sun at a predetermined solar illumination angle, which is designed to satisfy its thermal and power requirements. The fifth and final Breeze M burn occurs at the apogee in the descending node of the transfer orbit. This is where the orbital unit will perform a big plane change maneuver from 49 degrees to 30.4 degrees inclination and increase its perigee to almost 2,400 kilometers in a 4.4 minute burn. About 13 minutes later, the Viasat-1 satellite is separated from the Breeze M to reach its targeted geostationary transfer orbit. The total mission time from launch to spacecraft separation is approximately nine hours and 12 minutes. The first burn of the Breeze M upper stage is scheduled for completion about 19 minutes into the flight. Our broadcast will conclude about uh, after that burn since the rocket will be out of range of our tracking station and will receive, not receive any updates at that time. Remember, you can stay up to date on the Viasat 1 mission by visiting the ILS website, ILSlaunch.com, <clears throat> by following us on Twitter and by liking us on Facebook. We are now about six minutes away from liftoff from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. Let's take a closer look at Viasat 1's journey to Launch Pad 39. Typically, it takes about two years for a launch vehicle and satellite to be built, tested, and shipped to the launch site. From crew and spacecraft arrival, it can take from four to seven weeks to complete a launch campaign. Today's launch campaign started with the main team arrival at Baikonur. The spacecraft arrived aboard an Antonov cargo jet at Ubalani Airfield. The spacecraft is offloaded from the plane and placed onto a rail car. The thermally controlled rail car is hooked up to maintain the proper environmental conditions for the spacecraft during the six hour trip to the launch processing facilities. Once in the high bay, the spacecraft team does a series of system tests and other standalone operations, including fueling the spacecraft. Fueling of the spacecraft was then completed. The satellite is then mated to the Breeze M upper stage and rotated horizontally to be encapsulated in the payload fairing in Hall 101. The spacecraft, fairing, and upper stage are now referred to as the ascent unit. The entire assembly is mated to the booster stages of the ILS Proton launch vehicle in Hall 111. The integrated launch vehicle was rolled to the Breeze M fueling station where fueling of the Breeze M was completed. The complete rocket rolled out to the launch pad 39 where the entire vehicle is turned up vertical from the rail car by large hydraulic erectors. Proton rollout to the pad always occurs at exactly 6.30 in the morning, corresponding with the precise time the vehicle for Yuri Gagarin rolled out in 1961, marking this landmark anniversary in space advancement. Now here's a message from Mark Miller, Vice President and Chief Technical Officer of Viasat, recorded earlier at the Baikonur Cosmodrome. Welcome to the Baikonur Cosmodrome. 
This is a very historic facility. Back in 1961, the first manned orbital flight was launched out of this very facility. Now, on the 50th anniversary of the historic flight, the world's very first 100 gigabit per second satellite is going to be launched out of the same facility. When we started this journey about five years ago, our claims of a 100 gigabit per second satellite were met with uh, much skepticism. But now, thanks to the hard work from my colleagues at Biosat, Space Systems Laurel, ILS, and Kunichev, that dream is going to turn into reality. Biosat 1 tips the scales at about 140 gigabits per second. That's more capacity than all satellites in North America combined. And this capacity in the satellite promises to transform the broadband experience on satellites. Biosat 1 will lift off out of the Baikonur Cosmos room shortly. Enjoy the launch. Also joining us from Baikonur is Chris Hober, Senior Vice President of Systems Engineering at Space Systems Laurel. About three years ago, Viasat approached us with ideas for a satellite with three times the capacity of anything we'd ever done before. We like challenges, so we took it on. It's really great to be here in Baikonur at the end of that three-year period, hard work, and ready to see the start of a new age of broadband communications. So I have one message for the employees of Space Systems Laurel, Viasat, Krunichev, ILS, and that's Go Proton. Go Breeze M and go buy us that one. ExploreNet Communications is Canada's leading rural broadband provider and will use the Viasat One capacity owned by Telesat to provide high speed internet access in Canada. John Maduri, Chief Executive Officer of ExploreNet, sends this message from Baikonur. Hi, I'm John Maduri, CEO of ExploreNet. Canada's leading provider of broadband to rural communities. I'm delighted to be here at the Cosmodrome in Baikonur, Kazakhstan. This is a historic location where uh, the first manned orbital flight occurred. Think of the name uh, Sputnik, Yuri Gagarin. This is also a historic moment for Canada. With the launch of Viasat-1, ExploreNet will be able to offer fast, affordable, reliable, high-speed internet service everywhere. We're excited to be working with our partners at the RAL, Viasat. I'm proud of what our employees have accomplished. We've raised in excess of $500 million to make this vision come to reality. Again, later in 2011, we'll be able to offer high-speed internet right across our great country. Thank you very much to our employees and our partners. As the ILS Proton travels easterly downrange, our viewers will notice some time lags in our reporting of key mission milestones. The reason behind this delay is that the ILS Proton follows its pre-programmed flight path. It will pass out of range of the Baikonur receiving stations. At this point, the signals are received by stations downrange, then they're transmitted back to Baikonur, and this is gonna cause some small delays in our reporting, but at this time, as a moment of truth, Jim, it is time to uh, go and take a look at uh, the last few moments before the rocket takes off. Very good. Um, as you know, um, uh, today's launch of the Viasat-1 satellite on ILS Proton is a result of an accumulation of a lot of hard work from a lot of hard people. And all those people have worked together today, bringing us to this moment. We're now 20 seconds away from launch. And the final countdown, we are 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ignition, start, and we have liftoff of an ILS Proton rocket from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan with the Viasat-1 satellite on board. In about 10 seconds after liftoff, the rocket does a roll maneuver and will soon experience max dynamic Q uh, or max dynamic pressure. This is the maximum aerodynamic load on the vehicle that corresponds to about Mach 1.6 and occurs about one minute and three seconds after liftoff. Jim, this has been probably one of the prettiest nights I have seen one of these rockets go up. The moon, the sky, it's just perfect. 
it's always good when Mother Nature cooperates with you. It's difficult enough launching a rocket, but to have a beautiful night, beautiful weather, and of course the added dimension of the moon, just wonderful. So far, so good, it looks. So far, so good, as our Russian colleagues say. Uh, everything seems to be proceeding nominally as the vehicle heads in an easterly direction with a flight azimuth of about 61.3 degrees. We're coming up on the first stage's separation from the second stage. That is set to occur at two minutes into the flight. We're about 40 seconds away, as you can see from the video. The trail from the engines, engines looks very, very good. Okay, at this point, uh, we're just waiting on, on the first stage to complete and waiting for confirmation of separation which should be coming along very shortly. We can see from the trail, the first stage is burned out. And we have confirmation of a good separation between the first and second stages. The second stage engines actually ignite while still attached to the first stage, and the exhaust from those engines escapes through the open grid work between the stages. And it looks like we have a, a signal of ignition of all four stage engines. They will burn for a total of about three minutes and 27 seconds. The next key mission milestone will be stage two, three separation at L plus five minutes and 27 seconds. 20 seconds later, the payload fairing halves will jettison. All right, Jim, thank you so much. Let's learn a little bit more now about the manufacturer of Viasat-1, Space Systems Loral. As the leader in satellites for consumer broadband, Space Systems Loral has provided Viasat with a satellite that meets its new system architecture for high capacity. Viasat-1, we think, is going to change the satellite broadband industry, and we ended up coming up with a system approach to that, which encompassed everything from how we did gateways, how we did the satellite design, how we did the user terminals, to really get the best yield that we could on the capacity of the satellite. We know a lot of people think they understand satellite broadband now. And they think of it as being expensive and slow and sluggish. We think all those issues, really, root issues, bandwidth. We're going to be able to change those economics, change the way people perceive satellite broadband. Viasat One will be providing broadband coverage for the continental United States, including Hawaii and Alaska, from an orbital slot of 115.1. And we also have beams that provide coverage for the southern parts of Canada. Space Systems Loral has more than four decades of experience building KA band satellites. The company's highly reliable 1300 satellite bus has proven to be an excellent platform for high throughput satellites with KA band spot beam technology. Its scale maximizes the amount of spot beams, equipment, and thermal dissipation that can be accommodated. The Viasat-1 spacecraft is one of the most hardware-intensive satellites SSL has ever built. For all of us at uh, Space de Loral, uh, there is no question the Viasat-1 launch is the culmination of well over one and one and a half million labor hours of hard work. We are certainly gratified uh, to be part of the efforts uh, bringing to millions in the North America uh, continent a satisfied satellite broadband experience. I'd like to uh, take this opportunity to thank our Viasa customer for uh, giving us the opportunity to participate to uh, this important broadband market milestones. And certainly all our our employees for bringing their skills, uh, passion, and commitment uh, to make this satellite program a great success. This satellite, this capacity, is going to make an enormous difference in the value of the services that people get the first day we turn it on.